I'm now absolutely delighted to be joined by John Ball. John, welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed for taking the time to talk to us today. Now, now you're involved in the mathematics of liquid crystals. Why is that? When I was uh, younger, I, I was fortunate to hear many lectures from some of the masters of the subject, Frank Leslie, Jerry Erickson. At the time, I was working mostly on solid mechanics and elasticity, so I could see there was some kind of connection, but I never really understood what was going on. And then uh, much later, about maybe eight or nine years ago, I was asked to be the external examiner for uh, the thesis of Apala Majumda, who uh, eventually became my postdoc. And uh, her thesis was on liquid crystals, and so this somehow got me interested. And uh, at some point, she mentioned to me this Q tensor theory of liquid crystals. And in the 1970s and 80s, there was great work on liquid crystals by mathematicians, but it was almost all on this Ozane Frank theory of liquid crystals that describes the mean orientation of molecules by a, by a vector field. But the, uh, the, the theory of choice for, among physicists is this landau degen theory, and so I, I was interested in this and I started to work on this with some people in my group. What does mathematics bring to this? I, I think one of the differences between, say, solid mechanics and, 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 and liquid crystals is that, at least uh, in terms of a description with the director, uh, liquid crystals has more topology in it. And so uh, the, the defects have, uh, are described in in terms of topological invariance, among other things. What are some of the challenges involved in predicting the behavior of liquid crystals? I think one of the, one of the main ones which has interested me a lot is the uh, description of defects. Uh, as I just mentioned, there's uh, topology involved there. But also, uh, there are these many different theories of liquid crystals. I, I mentioned the ozane frank theory, which, in which the order parameter is, is a vector field. Then there's the landau degen theory, in which the order parameter is a matrix. And then there's the Onsaga theory, in which it's a probability distribution of, um, of molecular orientations. So, so one issue is, is how these different descriptions of the same phenomena link together. And another issue is how the defects that you observe in liquid crystals are described um, in these different theories. For example, for the um, ozone frank theory, they really are described in terms of actual singularities, math mathematical singularities of the PDE. Whereas for the landau degen theory, we believe that solutions are smooth, and so they have to be interpreted in, in, in different ways. So what's next for you? In the field of liquid crystals, I, I've been, I, 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 still, I still work on solid crystals as well. In fact, I, I, I try to, I try to, um, to take things from one field uh, to the other. Uh, for example, in, in, uh, in solid crystals for many years, I've worked on martensitic phase transformations. And there we see defects which are, are planar discontinuities. Whereas in uh, liquid crystals, um, uh, the, 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 the usual defects that are considered are, are point defects or line defects. And so I, I became interested, or I've become interested in the possibility of, of planar defects. And it seems that there are various situations where uh, at, at small length scales, um, planar defects are a reasonable approximation. So I'm beginning to explore this, particularly uh, as regards smectic uh, liquid crystals. John, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.